while farmers have been encouraged to use and apply organic fertilizers, this according to the Ghana Permaculture Institution in Tanob, Boise in the Kwanzaa North District of the Bono East region has become necessary because of the global shortage of inorganic fertilizer and its attendant high prices. Even though some of these farmers in the area have argued that organic fertilizers take so much time to fertilize the farm, hence their claim to the inorganic ones which have rapid results. The Institute has insisted that the use of inorganic fertilizer is not the way to go. Our Bono East Regional Correspondent Samuel Ayama joins us live from Tanabwasi for more details. Good to have you join us, Samuel. So tell us about the organic thank, and thank inorganic fertilizers. Yes, and uh, what you have gathered. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity here in Tanawasi. I'm currently at the yes, I'm currently at the uh, Ghana Permaculture Institute where um, they are into a lot here. And um, with me here is one of the officials to uh, introduce himself and then to walk us through uh, some of their activities here. Uh, you are live on GVC Real Time News. Uh, Tell us your name, your position here, and then walk us through what you do here at Ghana Permaculture Institute. Thank you very much. I am Charles Katere, the Deputy Director of Ghana Permaculture Institute. So uh, we are located in Techman, uh, Bono East Region, Tanobuase, Bafi Road. Um, Ghana Permaculture Institute was established or founded in 2003 by the late Dr. Paul Leoboa. <laughs> when he got the knowledge of permaculture. And when we talk of the permaculture, it simply means that a different way of life, looking and then looking into life in a different perspective, in a holistic view, in a way we can do things naturally that will benefit the environment, that will benefit our community, and that will benefit people around. Therefore, we follow three key principles and a key three ethics following all that we do. We said, whatever you do on this earth, as human beings, we need to care for the earth, we need to care for the people, we need to share surplus. And then as we will be going around, we'll be telling you how we implement this permaculture ethics. This land was acquired in 2011, and then uh, this land was a degraded land, which was seen as a land that cannot be used to uh, cultivate anything. So the founder uh, acquired this land to see how best we can implement and then use our old system of farming to rehabilitate and reclaim this land. Therefore, uh, we have been able to reclaim this land where we are planting a lot of food crops and then also processing a lot of crops over here. We will be going to one of our sectors where uh, we distill essential oil. So uh, at this center, we have this small structure. One of the principles that we saw is that we say use simple and slow solutions. When you use simple, slow solutions, we'll be able to acquire a lot of resources and then turn waste that are seen as problem challenges into resources. So when you come to this, our small, simple structure, we have a distillation center where we plant a lot of grasses that give us fragrance, or we say essential oil. Some of these grasses are lemon grass, we have citronella grasses, where we have this biomass, we have water under where it heats and then takes through the biomass through the uh, uh, distillation process. Okay. And then we get between water and then oil. We have the condenser that will cool the whole heat and then we'll get the essential oil and water at the same time. After distilling oil, we take the waste or the, the biomass and then we apply the biomass as a mulch. One of the organic farming systems that we advise and encourage uh, farmers to exhibit is a mulching system. 
when we talk of this mulching system, it is a way of fertilizing our soil and then also reducing wheat growth that will not, in fact, uh, uh, make us to call for synthetic chemicals and then fertilizers. This is one of the mulch after they steal oil from the grasses. We take the biomass and then we mulch it at this place. When you mulch, when you mulch the land, you will see that always the soil is very humid. It's very cool and uh, the temperature is very cool for plant growth. And then what we do is when you mulch like this is also reduce the, the weed growth because the weeds will grow when they see sunlight. Therefore, when you plant and then you mulch, the weeds reduces and uh, biomass decompose. We get a good fertile soil and then also as a fertilizer. One of the things we will recall in our villages is that, you know, when you plant at the backyard where they used to put refuse dam, you will see that the crop at the backyard will do very, very well. Why do they do that? When we talk about the soil, we are looking at organic matter, water, and microorganisms that will turn degrade this uh, biomass into a fertile soil. And some of the places we use biochar, that is a charcoal. After we have processed the essential oil, we have this biochar. This biochar uh, is not all that a fertilizer, but a nutrient house for the plant. But when you plant it, it has certain holes that is able to contain nutrients that the plants need. When it is many, it is able to release it when there's no more nutrients in the soil. That is how uh, we look at the farming, organic farming system. Now we are moving into uh, some of our uh, production facility, how we are able to add a lot of value to some of our products. So when you look at this place, all this across the moon, we have been able to mulch all this place. Therefore, we don't need to apply any chemicals or fertilizer. Currently, the reason why we don't advise and advertise for synthetic chemicals, because it is very costly, and then one way or the other, it is a way of moving into slavery again. And I will repeat that again. Synthetic chemicals, and then also uh, the next genetical modified seeds, it's a way of moving into another form of slavery. Because when I use this current happenings in Ghana, I think in uh, September, October, when prices of things rise up, many farmers were now complaining of the price of the synthetic chemicals, which one way or the other, the only thing that the chemical fertilizer does for us in agriculture sector is to add a little bit of nutrients to the soil and that will help the plant grow. But this is the case naturally, we already have all these nutrients that are available on the grasses, the waste that we have. Therefore, if we go back to our old way of farming, we will be able to cultivate a lot of farm crops that will not need us to use chemical fertilizer. So this is also our mushroom department. And with this mushroom department, we use principle that the output of something can become an input and there's no waste. We begin from this place. There are a lot of job opportunities in the agribusiness sector, but the only thing is that we said, when you are not able to see problems or challenges as solution, you always, see it as an adversity where you think there's nothing that you can do with your problems. These are sodas and rice bran that are an output. So a principle say that the output of something can become an input. Therefore, these sodas are just rampant in the sawmill. We have rice farmers that also cultivate the rice. After taking the main rice, we get a rice hacks. So we compost this, uh, this, this waste. After composting, we sterilize them in this drum. At the end of the day, we have an incubation room. So we plant, we put the seeds of the mushrooms in the composted sawdust and then rice bran. And at the end of the day, we are able to get a whitey substance like this. This bag has been colonized by 
uh, the mushroom tissue. Therefore, the only thing that we have to do is open this bag like this. We open it like this, and then we just water. When you water three, four days, you will harvest mushroom from this bag. And then these are some of the things that we do. We have farmers that come to take from this uh, point, and then they will just water, and then they will get fruiting mushrooms. So we go to where we harvest these mushrooms. And one of the things is using local materials in creating enough wealth and then creating impact. When you look at our structure, it will not cost you more than maybe 2,000 Ghana cities to cultivate or to create one of these structures. So we have all this mushroom uh, bats over here. You could see that this one, this is one of them. This is a mushroom. You water in the morning, and then in the evening you water. The next day it will start fruiting, and then you harvest. After harvesting, you can either dry it to use later, or you can use it at the at the spot. Okay. You can just cook. Okay. So what what when next are we moving to? And then uh... currently we are moving into uh, where we process. Moringa seeds into Moringa oil. Yeah. Adding value to our Moringa uh, product and then also converting the output after harvesting the oil into fertilizer and then also. Uh, okay, so we plant this side mm -hmm. and then we go to the rest. Okay, so the fertilizer aspect is what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. one of the things. As I repeated, says that we don't have waste. the waste is a resource. So let's go here. So this is our factory where we process. We are able to process soya beans. We process moringa seeds into oil, and then after harvesting the oil, we have what we call the cake, moringa cake, moringa cake. After getting the oil from the moringa seed, we get a cake like this. We grind them into a fine powder like this, which is a very good soil conditioner. Therefore, all part of the moringa plant, from the leaves to the seeds to the to the waste that is the cake, are all good as a soil nutrient. That does not re require us to buy any chemical fertilizers to apply on our crops. So this is, after pressing the oil, we are able to grind this cake into this fine powder that we can use as a fertilizer. That also has a similar or the same nutrient that the chemical NPK fertilizer will add to our soil. This is also our factory where we are able to process uh, tiger nut oil. So this is. A tiger nut uh, that we have pressed the oil, you can taste it, and then after getting the oil, this is also the cake. We are able to use this to prepare cosmetics and then also apply it as a fertilizer. Okay, okay. Um, because of our time factor, um, wrap us through. Okay, okay, so Dorothy, you can ask your question. I want to find out that how. Can farmers have easy access to the fertilizer? And do they produce on a large scale? You can ask your question. I'm asking that, do they produce this fertilizer on a large scale? And how can farmers have easy access to it? Okay, thank you very much, Dorothy. The question is that, um, how will farmers have access to um, the uh, fertilizer, and do, they, do people here produce it in a large scale that can at least um, be okay with the farmers that we have uh, in the Bono East region or the Tano uh, here alone? Currently, as of uh, December 2022, uh, GPR from our database, we're working with over 9,000 farmers mm -hmm. where we buy uh, our organic product mm -hmm. from them to process and add value to it and then get it back to the market, both the domestic and then the international market, mm -hmm. and then also get this, our fertilizer, to most of the farmers that we are working with. And we are open to 
any other farmer that will want some of these are fertilizer, organic fertilizer to use, that is more same like the uh, uh, synthetic chemical fertilizer. But it adds more nutrients to the soil and does not kill the microorganism as the synthetic chemical do. I remember one of our communities where we went, they had a good irrigation system. Within five years of using this intensive chemicals, they have to pause using their land because when you apply fertilizer again, it does not work. And then that will not give us a future uh, 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 good crops and then does not create a good future for us. That if we want a future where Ghana and Africa can depend on its own, then we need to be able to create our own system where we can use and reuse like our seeds and our waste into fertilizer and then maintaining and then improving our soil. Okay, before we, our final, your final message, whatever that you did, a wrap up because of our time. Exactly. So you just wrap so up and then. My final message is that we, our individuals, have a role to contribute to our agri business sector. And one of the ways we can do is to add value to whatever we are producing. And then also identify that we do not have the enough machines that the other European countries will have to use. But we have a different farming system, that is a, the subsistence farming, that is the peasant farming system, where small group of farmers will be able to cultivate the same crop or different crops at the same time. And they should have a team that will be able to process all this. And at least from there, we can be able to add a lot to the country's revenue and then to the country's GDP. I hope together we can build a good future Ghana. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have been engaging an official at the Ghana Permaculture um, Institute, Mr. Charles uh, Kateri, and then he has taken us through um, a lot of things that they do here uh, at uh, Ghana Permaculture Institute, located uh, in Tanobuasi uh, of the Bono East region. We'll continue to follow uh, the activities they do here and then uh, keep our viewers updated on the need for farmers to uh, use or apply uh, organic fertilizer on their farms. Thank you so much, Samuel Ayama. We are grateful for that report. That was our correspondent, Samuel Ayama, and where we're told farmers have been encouraged to use and apply organic fertilizer. And permaculture is looking or doing things in the natural way by caring for people, the earth, and sharing surplus. The Ghana Permaculture Institute insists that the use of inorganic fertilizer is not the way to go. And as of December 2022, the institute was working with 9,000 farmers and are currently open to supply more farmers with organic fertilizer. <laughs> 